Hi, I'm Tobias. In the next minutes, I'll introduce Crossplane to you and I will show you around. At the end of this talk, you will know what it's all about and how Crossplane can help you. Crossplane is an open source Kubernetes operator which enables to assemble infrastructure from multiple vendors in a declarative way. It exposes higher level self-service APIs for users of the platform to consume in an abstracted way without having to write any code besides YAML. All these customized infrastructure description can be packaged, easily distributed and shared. Crossplane has been invented by the maintainers of the well-known storage operator Rook in 2018. It has been donated to the Cloud Native Computing Foundation in mid-2020 and recently applied to be promoted to become an incubation level project. There are a few key features from which I'll, I will introduce the three most important ones to you in the next slides. Let's start with the crossplane providers. They are the building blocks for talking to upstream APIs like, like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, or even Helm. And they provide an abstraction layer by bringing provider-specific custom resources with an opinionated structure. Such provider-specific resources are, are called managed resources. From a user's perspective, they are just standard Kubernetes custom resources. But with the opinionated crossplane resource model, each of these custom resources looks similar. For example, each custom resource has a field called spec.4 provider, which contains the detailed configuration of the upstream resource. Most of the time, it reflects all possible options which are available in the third party API. This allows for full flexibility per supported API. Besides the official crossplane providers, a lot more can be found under the crossplane contrib GitHub organization. This is also the place where new providers are born and already contains a lot of very good providers. The next key feature are the crossplane compositions. This feature allows for custom and opinionated infrastructure definitions, which can be easily composed and provided to the user of the platform in a self-service way. This feature consists of four object types, which we will now be getting to know. The first one are composite resource definitions, also called XRD, which defines the custom API definitions. With them, the operator of the platform describes the opinionated service, which are then made available to the user. XRDs in the background generate crossplane flavored Kubernetes custom resource definitions, which adhere to the crossplane resource model. The compositions actually implement the custom infrastructure, which is defined in XRDs. There can be multiple implementations for XRD, which the user then can choose from. One could, for example, be a service which is tuned for production. The other one might have options enabled, which are great for the development environment. The user then chooses which composi composition should be selected when creating the service instance. A composite resource is the cluster scope object to instantiate a custom service implemented by the selected composition. And with the cost composite resource claims, the user of the platform specifies the infrastructure needs on a namespace scope. This can be done, for example, together with the application deployment. By splitting cluster scope and namespace scope objects, security constraints can be easily implemented with RBOC rules, and it allows for a separation of concern between the platform user and platform operator. This is very similar to the concept of persistent volume claims on the namespace scope and storage classes and persistent volumes on the cluster scope, which are usually predefined by the cluster operator. And the last important feature are the crossplane packages. With them, provider installation and configuration, as well as custom infrastructures can be easily distributed and shared. 
These packages are OCI compliant images, which contain just a bunch of crossplan YAML and can therefore be hosted on any OCI compliant registry. Crossplane pack packages allow for configuration versioning, RBOC handling, and dependency management. Packaging can be done manually, but much better via the Crossplane CLI. Some of you might wonder what the differences are between Crossplane and Terraform, as it looks like they are doing mostly the same at first sight. The main difference is that Terraform is designed to be a CLI tool which acts only on invocation. Crossplane, on the other hand, is an always running controller which acts on change. To know what the current state is, Terraform tracks it in a state file. This complicates collaboration on infrastructure and full automation a lot, mainly because of state file locking mechanisms needed. If the actual state differs from the one in the state file, bad things may happen. Manual changes to the infrastructure are only detected on the next CLI invocation, while Crossplane actively reconciles the infrastructure all the time and makes manual changes nearly impossible to stay in undetected. Terraform always acts on the full infrastructure. It takes care of. Where Crossplane is able to only configure pieces of it, making it much less invasive for small changes. Lately, Crossplane started an initiative to be able to reuse Terraform providers as Crossplane providers, which could be a huge boost for available providers. The VMware provider, which was released just lately, is actually based on the Terraform provider. This all doesn't mean that Terraform is bad. It just behaves very differently to do a similar job. As Crossplane is a control plane and Terraform is designed to work with control planes, Crossplane could even be managed with Terraform. The previously introduced concepts and features are the reasons why we at Vision and I personally care a lot about Crossplane. But there are more reasons. We can leverage the well-known Kubernetes API. It's the same language we also use to deploy applications. This allows to reuse already existing tooling like GitOps, CI-CD pipelines, or project sim. And the infrastructure and deployment needs of an application is defined on the same places. As Crossplane runs a reconciliation loop all the time, configuration drift isn't possible anymore. The control plane is always active, looking for changes on the upstream configuration. If it doesn't match the declared configuration, it simply makes sure to adhere to it. And last but not least, RBOC allows to protect the infrastructure provisioning and configuration, but allowing self-service in an easy way. Let's see how Crossplane looks like in real life. In this first live demo, we will have a look at various Crossplane specific Kubernetes objects and provision a ready service. The left diagram shows the demo Kubernetes clusters in use. The top one is the one we'll be, we will be looking at in the demo. It runs Crossplane and it is the cluster in which we'll be deploying Redis. The actual service then runs on the bottom cluster, the service cluster. The provisioning happens via Helm. The right di diagram shows the Crossplane objects involved in this demonstration. There is a Redis instance XRD, a composition which implements this XRD and we will be creating a Redis instance of object to actually deploy the instance. Let's dive in. First, we will be looking at the XRD object. There is one defined and it is called Redis instances.sync.tools. It's already established and ready to be used. When we look at available compositions, we see that there is one composition available, which is called Redis small. This composition actually implements the service. And by looking into it, we see that it will compose two Kubernetes objects, a secret and a release object. The release object is part of the Crossplane Helm provider, which will, which will actually deploy a Helm chart on the service cluster. At this time, there is currently no Redis instance deployed on this cluster. 
I prepared a Redis instance of object which will ask for a Redis instance service to be deployed. It is a very short and simple object. And at the end, it just asks for the composition which should be used to implement this service. In this case, we will be using the Redis small composition. That's all for it. We can now apply this object to the cluster and we've now created a Redis instance. In the background, we see in the background, the service will now be provisioned. At, the, at this time, the service isn't ready yet. That's why the field ready is in the state false. As we've seen before, we are using the cross plane helm provider with the release object in there. And as providers bring their own custom resource definitions, we can query for them on the cluster as well. And we see that this helm releases object has been applied to the cluster by the composition. When we, when we look at this object right now, it looks like the service has already been provisioned and we can ask the Redis instance object if this, this is actually the case and we see the state is now ready true. That means this Redis instance would now be uh, actually able to be used by the end user. Now let's clean up so that we are ready for the next demonstration. After this first live demo, I want to tell you more about our first use case we've implemented with Crossplane. It is an internal marketplace and cloud foundry to enable self-service, service provisioning for development and service teams. The integration to this marketplace had to be done with the Open Service Broker API, as this is the API which is tightly integrated into the Cloud Foundry world. To achieve this integration, we developed the bridge between Crossplane and the Open Service Broker API. The two concepts match very well. Our Crossplane Service Broker is available as an open source tool on GitHub. As the infrastructure of the customer doesn't provide any cloud services, we are provisioning the actual services using the Crossplane Helm provider on service clusters. This project already pushed the boundaries of Crossplane a lot. We're talking about more than 1,000 managed services. In the second demo, we will see the service provisioning of the same Redis service as we've seen in the first demo, this time using the Open Service Broker API with the Kubernetes service catalog. This time we have three Kubernetes clusters for the demo. The top one represents the end user, which has the Kubernetes service catalog installed, which connects to the Crossplane service broker. The control cluster in the middle runs Crossplane and the Crossplane service broker and services are once again deployed via Helm on the service cluster. The diagram on the right is nearly the same as in the first demo. This time it shows the mapping between Crossplane objects and open service broker API constructs. Let's dive in. We will start in the middle on the control cluster. Once again, we will we look at the XRD object and query for an annotation, which we will be seeing later again, as this one is consumed by the crossplane service broker. Checking if there is a Redis instance available. No, there isn't, no, isn't one. We've deleted the one we provisioned before in the first demo. By looking at the consumer cluster, we can see that there is already one cluster, uh, one uh, broker available. The Kubernetes service catalog is already installed and configured ready to be used. We can now query this, this uh, service broker to see what services are available for the end user to consume. At this time, it only offers a ready service and the small plan. And you can see the description is the same as we've seen on the XRD for the Redis instances on the control cluster. We do now want to provision a Redis instance. We select a small plan and we say we want the Redis case class to be used for this provisioning. The instance is now being provisioned and that's why it has the status provisioning. And we are now curious to see what happened on the control cluster. For this, we query again for the Redis instances object. And we see that the cross service broker now created a Redis instance object 
which is actually the same as we've seen before when we manually created this Redis instance of training. As you can see, there is a, a name generated and this name is now being reused all over the place. This output also shows that the service is being provisioned on the AppC service one cluster. And this is the cluster we'll now be looking at. As we are using the cross-plane help provider and this cross-plane help provider uh, behaves just like if you would be using the Helm CLI tool, it, actually instantiates a Helm chart, we can also use the Helm CLI tool on the service one cluster to query for Helm charts, which are installed on this cluster. So we see that, that there is the, the Redis chart, which has been instantiated. It is installed in, this, in the namespace, which has the same name as the Redis instance object. And we can now check if there is a Redis pod up and running. This output shows that the Redis master zero pod in the namespace with the same name as the Redis instance is up and running. And that, that's a good sign so that we, that we can switch back to the consumer cluster. So that the end user now can connect to this Redis instance, a service binding has to be created. Let's check if the instance is ready, it is. And now we will create a service binding. The service binding, queries the cross-plane service broker for connection details. And if everything is all right, these connection details are now returned. Status is ready, that's good. And this means that there is now a Kubernetes secret available, which contains all information needed for the application to connect to this Redis instance. For example, the host name, the passwords, the port, and other information for this particular service. So that's it for the demo part. In the last minutes, I gave you an overview of Crossplane. Of course, there's a lot more to it. The best way is to learn to try it yourself. And all I can say is Crossplane is the only control plane you ever need again, at least until something better appears. Thanks a lot for listening and don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or want to know more. And if you're interested in cloud native news and tools, we are invited to follow the vision.timer and subscribe to my personal newsletter. Thank you very much. <laughs>